Hello and welcome back to the another episode of Daily News Quiz Analysis for IAS Prelims 2025. It is 4th November today and in this video we are going to discuss various important prelims based questions which were taken actually from the current affairs. You know before we start our discussion I would like to give the brief introduction about the video so that you will get more connected with it. You know every day in this video we discuss three types of questions. The first set of questions which we discuss here are taken from the current affairs. You know we take up the most important articles from the newspapers. We discuss them and derive a prelims based questions from those articles so that it will give you the idea how the questions can be asked from them. So this is the first set of questions which we discuss here. The another set of questions which we discuss here are taken from the static portion. As you know we had started to discuss the static topics here. And every day we discuss a single static topic here and we had started with Indian polity and we in Indian polity we had reached it till fundamental rights and today we are going to discuss few constitutional remedies you know under article 32 so we are going to derive a prelims based question on that after discussing the prelims based after discussing the static topic questions and the current affairs based questions we will shift our approach to the uh, previous year questions which would be the last part of the video where we will discuss few previous year questions. We will try to find out the ways and methods by which we can solve those questions and we will try to find out how we can implement that knowledge in the upcoming exam. So this is all about the video in nutshell. So before we will start our discussion I would like to request you guys few things please do follow that. First of all, please do watch the full video. It is going to be very much important for you. And trust me, it won't be the waste of time. You know, it it is something from where you, you would gain, gain at least something. You know, as I told you, what are the sources of the questions which we discuss here? And the good thing about this is it is the same source which is used by the UPSC. So there are high chances that if not the questions, but the statements may coincide. If not the statements, but definitely the concepts which we are going to discuss here will definitely be asked. So it is better for you to watch the full video. It won't take you more than 20 or 20, 30 minutes. So stay here and watch the video and gain as much information as possible. And another thing which I would like to request you guys here, please do note down these questions which we discuss here. You know, they are going to be very much important for you. You know, when your exams would be near, you would want to revise the current affairs, you would want to revise the static part. At that time, you have to go through the C set also. So the time is very much limited for you and the syllabus is very huge. So if you have these questions with you, if you would revise these questions, it will definitely help you in connecting with the current affairs, in connecting with the static topics which we had discussed here, as well as it will boost your confidence before entering the exam hall. So it is better for you to note down these questions. As you know, we are doing this from last six months now. We had discussed various types of questions here. You know, they are going to be very much important for you. At the end, I would like to request you guys, please do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so that they may also get benefited from the initiative. And also do write in the comments what else should we bring for you. Now, without any delay, let's have or let's start the discussion. Let's try to solve these questions. Here the first question is about the Indo-Iranian relationship. You know you would ask me what is the reason why we had brought this question here because there was an article in the newspaper today the BRICS summit to boost India-Iranian ties. You know about Indian-Iranian ties before we will solve this question I will give you a little gist of the article then we will try to solve it. Indian-Iranian ties were not same as it is today. You know, we had very great relationship with Iran from the from, from the past. In the past, we had huge best relation with Iran. In spite, uh, uh, you know, Iran being a Muslim country, you know, Arabian country, they had always supported India on the crucial matters where it mattered. But unfortunately, from last few years, from last decade or so, you know, there are various sanctions on Iran from the Western side and also due to the COVID-19, the relationship with Iran has, you know, it has little, it had, bro it, there is a little friction in this relationship. You know, there are the sanctions from the US side and also some of the statements made by the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini there against India. So 
what were the reasons for those statements it is because how india withdrew from the relationship with the iran because of the sanctions from uh, usa so in response to that uh, iran started to make statements with respect to the situation of minorities in india and recently we saw how iranian president made statement with respect to uh, when he when he said there are genocides happening in different parts of the world and he also mentioned in, in india in that too in the same sentence so we there was a huge reaction to that but despite all these things there was a brics uh, summit in russia indian and iranian officials met and there are huge chances that our relations will again come on the track because there is huge you know huge uh, uh, opportunities are there uh, there is a huge potential in this relationship if we look at how india has been since uh, last uh, uh, two to three decade, decades how india's voice is now uh, is now the point of uh, you know how everybody respects india's voice how india is uh, emerging as a global power india is emerging as the voice of the south so india can, how india can be the mediator between the wars happening in the world right now before between india between russia and ukraine between israel and palestine now israel and iran so india can be the mediator and uh, iran definitely understands that so it is best for iran to have a good relationship with india to talk with india to develop its relationship to bring this relationship on the track as it was earlier and also india iran's natural resources that is huge that can be the boost for indian economy how we can utilize those natural resources how we can make iran invest in india as we know iran uh, contributes to the 12% of the global energy resources also there are other areas of co corporation like infrastructure we have chobar port how in which india has invested highly uh, huge sum of money development of oil pipelines and other various sources of uh, investments or uh, various sources of infrastructural areas of corporation are there in which india has been part of it so it is always better for the both the countries which uh, you know they should come on the right track but at the same time india has to look into the considerations of the west how west wants india to perceive its relationship india have to be very much neutral in it at the same time you know uh, iran is very much important for india so this is in nutshell about the india's relationship with iran now taking this into the consideration let's try to solve this question and get more idea about it here the question says as uh, as we know question says which of the following statements about the indo iranian relationship are correct first statement india has a historical historically maintained a strategic partnership with iran primarily due to energy security concerns 100% correct uh, iran has been historically if we look at from the centuries we had great uh, cultural relationship people to people relationship so it has been and also security energy security concerns are the major drivers for our relationship with iran the second option the us sanctions on iran have had no significant impact on india's investment in the iranian energy sector no this is uh, totally incorrect because because of the uh, is from the last day few few years because of the us sanctions india has withdrew from many you know many developmental infras developmental projects uh, which were uh, between india and iran which were between multiple countries there so india withdrew from that india has stopped uh, you know uh, taking the uh, you know uh, russia uh, iranian oil because of that so it has definitely impacted india's relationship with uh, india so with iran india's relationship with iran so option second is totally incorrect coming to the third option here india's involvement in chabhar port project is aimed at enhancing connectivity with central asia and afghanistan 100% correct so with respect to this question the correct statements are option 1 and option 3 only and from the code given below the correct code would be option b so by solving this question what did you get from it we understood what is the india's relationship with iran what how historically we had maintained this strategic partnership and what are the you know bedrocks uh, bottlenecks to this relationship basically the major bottleneck is us sanctions on iran and also from the few years from last few years because of this sanctions how india responded to these sanctions then how uh, iran retaliated to it by making some uh, extreme comments with respect to india's internal uh, issues so this has led to the you know friction between the relationship so this is what we understand from it 
Now with this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is about the India-Sri Lanka Joint Working Group on Fisheries. You know, from the history, uh, when India got its independence and how Sri Lanka came in, we one thing we understood that as we are very much near to each other, we share the coastline, we share the waters. So there are high chances that there is going to be some friction between the two countries. And the major, majorly this friction is seen, is found evident in the fishery department of the both countries. You know, Sri Lanka often claims that Indian fishermen are uh, crossing the water borders, they are entering into their waters and doing different activities there which had harmed their ecosystem, which has, uh, uh, you know, risked their economy. As we had seen, they always, they had blamed Indian fishermen that they are doing the various illegal practices with respect to the uh, with respect to the resources in Sri Lanka, for example, one of the major uh, practices done by Indian fishermen there is a bottle, uh, bottom trawling, which has uh, degraded the uh, ecosystem there. And also there is lack of, uh, and uh, you know, other issues with respect to it. There are lack of clarities between the waters, uh, which, which up to what length the water should be under the India's control and up to what length water should be under Sri Lanka's control. So there are various issues arising because of the uh, these uh, issues. So with respect to this, to tackle these issues, uh, India and Sri Lanka had come forward and they had brought up a joint working group on fisheries. So with respect to this, let's try to solve this question and uh, you know uh, get more about it. Why we had brought this question? Because uh, it is the sixth meeting of India-Sri Lanka joint working group on fisheries. It was uh, held. So let's try to solve it. Here the first statement, it says, the joint working group was established to address issues related to illegal fishing and maritime security in Indian Ocean. 100% correct. Nothing wrong with this statement. Statement two. The group aims to enhance cooperation in sustainable fishing practices and resource management between India and Sri Lanka. Correct. Nothing wrong with this statement. Third, the joint group working includes representatives from the fishery ministries of both countries along with stakeholders from the fishing communities. 100% correct. So with respect to this question, all the three statements are correct. And from the code given below, the correct option would be option D. So with this, let us move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is about the challenges faced by Indian cities uh, in the context of the urbanization. You know, <coughs> if we will try to understand the urbanization, it has been different in different countries. For developed countries, the urbanization is different. For developing countries like India, the urbanization is totally different. It is driven by the you know, uh, it is driven by the poverty. The people go to these urbanized, uh, uh, go to these cities. To be poor people go to these cities to, uh, you know, get some job there. To they search for, they go there for the search of the work. And there is lack of uh, habitation there. There is there is lack of housing there for them. So they are forced to live in the slums. And which uh, finally, you know, what does it indicate? It indicates the unhealthy life of the uh, Indian cities. And also there are various major issues with respect to it. So we, by solving this question, we will get some basic idea what are the challenges faced by Indian cities in the context of urbanization. First of all, the first statement says inadequate infrastructure and public transport system 100% correct. There is inadequate uh, infrastructure structure in India because why it is so because our urbanization is not driven by different motives but it is driven by the poverty poverty faced by the people in our country they one they go there for the search of the job the second uh, option is uh, uh, rapid population growth leading to housing sh uh, shortages 100% correct third option poor waste management and sanitation facilities 100% correct fourth uh, limited access to clean drinking water and air pollution, 100% correct. So these are the major issues faced by the Indian cities. Because of these issues, there are various challenges faced by the people in the Indian cities. So with respect to this question, the correct statement would be option D. So with this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question says, which of the following statements regarding millets in India are correct? So let's try to solve it. The question says, uh, which of the following statements are correct with respect to millets? First statement, millets are considered climate resilient crops and require less water compared to other cereals, 100% correct. 
statement two the indian government has launched initiatives to promote millet cultivation and consumption as part of the national food security mission 100 percent correct third statement india is the largest producer of millets uh, in the world contributing over 50 percent this is totally incorrect india is one of the larger uh, largest producer of millets but it does not contribute over 50 percent so this question is this statement is incorrect so with respect this question the correct statements are option one and two only with this now let's move to the another question and try to solve that you know here the question is about the asia's first buddhist summit it was held at where you know asia's first buddhist summit was held in which uh, at where, what place is it Kathmandu, nepal no is it uh, colombia sri lanka no is it colombo sri lanka no is it islamabad pakistan no it was definitely held at new delhi india so this is the asia's first buddhist summit was held at new delhi india and what was the theme? What is the? It is going to be held tomorrow. To be held in New Delhi tomorrow. And what is the theme of this? The role of Buddha Dharma in strengthening Asia. So this is the theme of this Buddhist first Buddhist summit, which is going to be held in New Delhi tomorrow. And please remember the theme. It is the role of Buddha Dharma in strengthening Asia. So with this, let us move to the another question. It is about which of the following countries recently started a sea drill with Russia. You know, there was a news article about joint Russia sea drill uh, signal start of dash foreign policy shift. You know, which country is foreign policy shift? This country is uh, now, you know, it is uh, acting like India, how we believe in non-alignment, uh, you know, not aligning to a particular country. So which country is that? Is it Japan? No. Is it Australia? No. Is it USA? No, definitely not. Is it uh, Indonesia 100% correct? So it is the Indonesia who you know who had started the joint uh, Russia sea drill, which signaled the start of Indonesia's new foreign policy. Indonesia's foreign policy shift. So with respect to this question, the correct statement is option C. With this, we had solved the questions with respect to the current affairs. Now let's move to the another part where we will uh, discuss the questions with respect to the static topic. Here the question is about Article 32, as it is the, uh, it is one of the, you know, most important article in our constitution. It is the right to constitutional remedies are given in here, and it is, uh, it is that it is the soul of the constitution. It is the very soul of the constitution and the very heart of it, according to B. R. Ambedkar Sahib. So, with respect to this, let's try to understand what are these. Remedies given in this article, Article 32, there are various remedies given. For example, habeas corpus, mandamus, uh, mandamus prohibition, and uh, cure warrant and other. So let's try to solve it one by one. Let's try to get what this habeas corpus is. If you know by the definition, what does what does this writ of habeas corpus? What does it mean? Habeas corpus itself means to have the body you know it can be issued against anybody whether it is person or state so let's try to solve it and get uh, get to know more about it about one more thing about this uh, these so we should know that it is not the exclusive or original uh, you know with respect to the fundamental rights uh, you know it is not uh, exclusive you know supreme court does not have this exclusive jurisdiction over it you know people can go to the uh, uh, high courts also by to grant these uh, to to ask high court to issue these writs so let's try to solve it the first statement habeas corpus is a fundamental right granted under article 32 of the constitution 100 percent correct nothing wrong with it the writ of habeas corpus can be issued against private individuals as well as the state 100 percent correct the supreme court has the exclusive jurisdiction to issue the writ of habeas corpus no it, it does not have exclusive it can be issued by the high courts also about habeas corpus what does it mean to bring the body you know for example anybody is detained by the state uh, by detained by the state agencies or anybody any private agency so the supreme court can issue them that bring that uh, person to the Court. It does not mean that the, that person, uh, that particular person is uh, not guilty. It only means that just bring him to the court and courts will decide further what to do with him. So with respect to this question, I hope you had understood it. The <coughs> correct statements with respect to this question are option one and two only. So with this, let's move to the last part of our discussion and try to solve some questions there. Here the question is about which one of the following observations is not true about the quit india movement of 19 
1942. First of all, it was a non-violent movement. You know, if we look at the Kuwait Inter Movement, we see huge number of people died. There was huge violence there. But is this with respect to this question, should we mark it is incorrect or it was the non it was really non-violent movement or was it violent? If we look when it was framed, Kuwait Inter Movement was given by Mahatma Gandhi. It was clearly it should have been the non-violent movement, but from the agencies, you know, they there was no reaction from uh, initially there was no reaction from the people. So it definitely started as a non-violent movement. So it was a non-violent movement early then, but unfortunately because uh, what happened when it started by time, so it changed into a violent movement. So with respect to this question, correct uh, option one, it is correct. It uh, it started as a non-violent, but it became a non-violent movement. Second statement, it was led by Mahatma Gandhi, 100% correct. It was led by Mahatma Gandhi, but here we have to see which part is not true. So this is not true with respect to this question. Third statement, it was a spontaneous movement, 100% it was a spontaneous movement, but with respect to this question, we have to find which is not true. So this is also incorrect. Here, a third, a fourth part, it did not attract the labor class in general. You know. It did attract the labor class. Uh, it did not. It definitely did not attract the labor class in general. There are various issues with the labor class with respect to this Kuwait India movement. So, with respect to this, it is correct. But here we are. We have to find which is which are not true. So, this statement is also incorrect. Now, coming back to the question, what is the correct statement with respect to this question? It was a violent movement. It is 100% correct. It did start it as a non-violent movement, but it changed into a huge violent movement. So with respect to this question, the correct statement is option A, that it is not true about the Kuwait India movement, that it was not, uh, it was a non-violent movement. I hope you had understood it. Little complicated to understand such questions, but uh, I think you had understood it. Coming to the last part of today's discussion, it says what was the reason for Mahatma Gandhi to organize a Satyagraha on behalf of the peasants of Kheda? The administration did not suspend land revenue collection in spite of drought, 100% correct. There was huge drought, but in spite of suspending them, they demand the extra 23%. So with respect to this question, this statement is correct. Coming to the say, option B, it says the administration proposed to introduce permanent settlement in Gujarat, totally incorrect. So with respect to this question, the correct statement is option A only. So by this, I think you had understood this video very much. So please, if you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and please do subscribe the channel. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.